Hey guys, my name is Ajay and part 02 we are going to talk about Azure VNet to VNet pairing. So let's get started. So I have two VNets in the same region. My first container is going to be 10.20.0.0.16, which is going to be the part of VNet 1. My second container is 10.30.0.0.16, which is VNet 2. So I have chosen a couple of subnets. My private subnet to start with 10.23.0, my application 4.0, my web 5.0, public 1.0, and I'm part of the same subscription. So you can see I have chosen another VNet2 and I created another container and uh, the IP addressing is the same way. So my private start with 10.33.0 public 30.1, application 30.4, web is 5.0, and I have taken two gateways, subnets, 10.22.0 and 10.32.0. We will talk about the gateway connectivity in next series, but here we are going to establish a VNet to VNet pairing. There are two options available when we talk about VNet to VNet pairing. My first option is going to be a regional VNet to VNet pairing and second option is going to be my global virtual network pairing. Even if it is a regional, the first one, you're not going to have the connectivity over the internet or maybe some sort of the unsecured media. In this case also, you are going to use the Microsoft backbone. If you go for global pairing and this also you can connect your vnet which might be hosted in a different region but you are going to consume the infrastructure of microsoft Back backbone so a couple of things we need to keep in mind whenever you are provisioning this kind of pairing you're not going to have any sort of downtime for your resources while you create the pairing or maybe after you create the pairing and there are some charges also those are the very very nominal charges for ingress and egress traffic when you connect these two vnets and do some data transfer two virtual networks in two different regions they are paired with global vnet pairing and a small limitation over there so let's say one vnet which is VNet1 and you are trying to connect your VNet2 which is hosted in a different region and you are using a load balancer which is the basic load balancer so you connect, cannot connect the front end VIPs. This re restrictions does not exist when you go for the standard load balancer. Another thing we need to keep in mind this VNet2 VNet pairing as very very similar to the networking what we do in our legacy world. So you cannot have any sort of the IP overlapping. Since we talk about there are some charges applicable for any other data transfer which happens between the VNets. So you can go to the Microsoft Azure portal and choose your region and your currency. It is going to tell you if you are within the same region, this much is going to be the cost for data transfer. Here we can see 0.01 per GB, which is inbound and the same is for the outbound. When we go for the global VNet pairing, it is going to be a different cost, which you can see. So this cost is available. You can go to the Azure portal and uh, get the estimation. In my previous video, we have seen I deployed the VNet 1. Now I'm going to deploy a VNet 2, which is going to be in the same region. So let's see those steps. So I log into my Azure portal and from there I will choose create virtual network. This is my subscription. This is my resource group. I'm going to use the same resource group what I have chosen while creating the VNet1. So this time the name of the instance is going to be the VNet2. My reason remains same. It is going to be the Central India. My container for VNet2 is going to be 10.30.0.0. And I have carved a couple of subnets from here. Once I go to my VNet resources, once it is deployed, you can go to the diagrams. You can see this is my VNet2 and these many subnets we have carved from there. So 
we are going to establish a regional pairing between two vnets vnet1 vnet2 so i have chosen a machine which is a linux host that is connected to your application subnet similarly here it is a unix machine it is part of the application subnet which is part of the vnet2 my ip is which is based on the dscp whatever the subnet we have chosen so subnet for the application was 10.10.4.0 slash 24 so dot 4 is the first ip address which is assigned from the dscp range and similarly here uh, machine 2 is having dot 4 ip address which is assigned from vnet 2 let us verify the IP address we, which we were talking about. Those are configured on the NIC or not. So this is my machine one, app Unix one. And if I do a if config eth zero, that is my interface. I can see this IP address is assigned, which is 10.10.4.4. Similarly, on the app Unix two, I have IP assigned 10.34.4. Let us talk about the pairing deployment now. So to start with, you need to choose a VNet from where you want to establish a VNet pairing. So in this case, my VNet is going to be one. I need to go to the pairings and click on the add button. After clicking the add button, you will see this screen which does add pairing. First, you need to specify a pair link name. In this case, I want to establish a pairing between vnet1 to vnet2 so i have mentioned vnet1 to vnet2 that is the name i'm not going to choose or touch any of other settings so i will keep it default now you need to specify a remote virtual network peer link i will choose just opposite this is basically a configuration which should happen on the remote side so my from remote point of view it is going to be vnet2 to vnet1 however you don't need to make any such configuration on the remote vnet you initiate a connection from one side and under the side will take or do all the configuration now i need to specify a virtual network which you want to peer. So we are under the VNet1 and we want to peer to VNet2. The rest of the settings we are going to leave to the default. The moment you hit the button and you can go to the VNet2 peering and you can see under the peerings it is this is not the configuration which I have done here. So this was specified under the VNet1. So we can see VNet2 to VNet1. This is being updated. Now we can see our peering status on the VNet1, it is showing connected. Same thing I should see on the VNet2, it is connected. At this moment, my peering is successful. Now let's do the testing, which is going to be the ICMP base to ensure that the peering which what we created is successful or not. So from app Unix01, I'm going to initiate a ping to app Unix and we can see the response is coming back so far we established a connectivity between the vnet1 and vnet2 which is going to be the vnet pairing in the next video i'm going to show you if you have a different vnet which is going to be the vnet3 and if it is located in a different region how this connectivity looks like and how the global pairing works and similarly, even if you have this connectivity you want to establish over the gateway, you need to carve these gateway subnets and create the VPN gateway, even though you can do that pairing as well. One thing keep in mind, whenever you are creating the VNet pairing, we do not need any sort of separate encryption. All the encryption for the traffic which is being transferred between these VNets will be based on a technology which is called the maxic so maxic can be used for those links so azure is going to give you the maxic encryption for this traffic but when we move for the vpn gateway you can configure 
uh, separate encryption as well. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.